Yeah, and I will tell you what was exciting for me. I think it's one of the most exciting uh, projects probably we gave um, as a challenge. And the main reason was it, it has a component of everything from scientific research to, um, you know, just AI to machine learning to, but the most important part is it's the, it's the redefinition of, for most people, they, they won't have chance if you are not in the scientific research, you won't have that much chance to work on time series data or for example, satellite missions that are saints, you know, it's like they observe something and then send you, whether it's a solar one or, um, or signal analysis, like if you are in a telecommunication. Um, and in every place, most of, I mean, of course, one is finance as well, but whether almost everything is, has a time dimension. And the time series data means it is a, a you know, a cross section for, for many, many fields. Now, most of you probably when you do um, in the past or maybe, I mean, from now on, I don't know, but it's like in the past, a lot of the time, very few people would have, would appreciate time series as a language in a way that a lot of people think time series as just signal and just noise. But not many people will be able to tell you time series as a language. And one of the most successful softwares in the past in time series are not actually signal versus noise. They're actually a lot more of them are high scale level ones that deals with like Google types or Facebook types and many other types are actually language based. So that means you are trying to find a token or a dictionary for that time series, whether it is on and in different, they call it manifolds, but you know, let's say different um, structure of time series. You know, time series can be an image time series, as a, you know, an Earth observing satellite, for example, will will give you a timestamp for on each timestamp. The data is actually an image, the image of the world. If it is a weather, it is just the entire like that. You know, so it doesn't matter. Just let's say the, the data structure at each point in time and they are connected. And um, if it's one dimension, it's what normally you would deal with. But you don't normally think of each of this as, as language. But by, if you think of it from one point to another point, what happens is a movement. It is the same as in the same things, from one to another, you will use, you know, the, the range is limited. So the range in the dictionary sense, if you think of it in, in, a, in, a, in a vocabulary or in an actual language, let's say you will have from, if we're thinking of it in, in word sense, in character, it's easy. From one character to another, you know, from one point to another point in a language, there's gonna be probably 20 or 30 something in English characters. It's gonna be one of them. So it's actually, um, what you call uh, just a uh, categorical variable, right? You are actually determining which which variable is going to be, which which component in that categorical variable. So it's much more of you can think of it as a classification or or sort. If it is a word, maybe then you have a fifty thousand English words, maybe, and they happen one of the plus you know some of the extensions and uh, commas, and spaces, and stuff. So one of them out of the 20,000, uh, out of the 50,000 words, you would get one, right? Uh, and the next one. But in time series, it's similar, right? From one point to another point, it is connected because it is influenced in a certain way. Then out of, let's say, a range between zero and one, if you normalize it, will happen. Of course, the, the enumeration or the cardinality is high. But by giving it, by breaking it into a category, you have done already, when you did um, uh, causal inference, you had to transform actually continuous variables into uh, ranges, right? And discretize them. So by discretizing a time series, 
you will be able to then form, okay, it will be now similar to a wall. Now, how do you discretize? Becomes a, a key component, but once you discretize, you know, then it's similar. So from one point to another point, it will be one of them. It either goes up by this amount or down by another amount. So that's why you will be able to see time series as a form of just, you know, just vocabularies. And if they are vocabularies, you know, how much can you not just use them? It's the same, right? It's just an, uh, a sentence and trained. So that's why Kronos or others, they would, they kind of make you think and provide you a very deep insight about time series because it's, it's saying, can there be a large language model type that actually understands the language of time series? And the implication of that is immense because, you know, like we know why words are or why uh, sentences are interesting, you know, like sentences are, you know, uh, like basically large language models, why they really work. Inherently, we assume there is a structure in it's called grammar. There is a grammar in any language. Now, in time series, there isn't such rule. Or there might be grammar, but in a very domain related. So, for example, in, in weather, there might be one grammar. But in the stock market, there might be another grammar. But can it's just you can think of it as a multilingual. Can there be a similar language that we can infer and it's not clear but there was the reason why we gave you that challenge was there was one paper recently that came out that seems to prove or at least provide evidence there is such thing just like language there is also such a scalability for time series and i think that was the reference we gave you in one of them so let me stop there that was why that understanding is in itself worth a master's degree um in itself okay without that much exaggeration so that was why the it was one of the most exciting project uh, or challenge for me okay let me stop there but i can accept one or two questions if you have japanese yes uh, i'm uh, i'm also very um surprised by that because as you said the for a language there is a grammar so if the model learn the grammar then it could actually predict the next word or the next sentences but when it comes to uh, time series data it's different uh, language and in different classifications and one of the models that we were working on was Cronus, and Cronus is good at is, uh, or had a good uh, zero shot um uh, zero shot evaluations so mm -hmm. it means that they could actually it could predict uh, for a time series data that it never has been trained on or seen before. So it's very challenging. How is that even possible? Because there are a lot of dimensions in different classifications. So how can one model trained on in different classification was able to predict another data set with a different classification? Does the dimension matter or how is that possible? Yeah, yeah. So, but that was exactly why, you know, in a way like we may not have communicated well last time, but when we want you to explore task six, which is supposed to be actually the main task in principle, was to learn about prompting in time series. So, you know, what is prompt in time series? It is, of course, a prompt in time series is not the same. You know, you have to know the language of time series. You are prompting it in time series. What does that mean, the language of the time series? The language of time series is, of course, intervals. And, you know, you, you must be prompting it in any way. Even if for zero-shot learning, you are prompting it by using the language. And for you to understand the language of time series was the key component. So that means what sets, you know, what is prompt in time series. So for me, a lot of this is the frequency you are you have to mention the frequency um, and you have to mention uh, some other things, but not in a, an actual language because it's not trained in a language, but in a language of time series. So being able to understand that abstraction 
was the key, one of the key component of task six. So hopefully in the intensive job search, we might be able to come back to it again uh, and, and see, um, understand a bit more. Okay. So great. So then let's start um, this week's challenge. And this week's challenge is more on another company that it's much more you have already covered many of it. So now here, the whole, the most goal is for you to demonstrate your overall understanding and in RAG and um, high precision, basically, um, or automatic prompt generation, evaluation data, and all. And there is going to be a spin, if whether it's written or not, we'll write there. You're also going to be a exploring agents um, using at least um, autogen. You will be able to also implement some form of agents to do this. So as usual, who has read the challenge document and who can explain in their words their understanding. Anyone who has, uh, yeah, Michael. And I'm, I'm expecting, I mean, it's, I mean, earlier I saw in the stand-up so many people were raising hands. I'm expecting the same here. You know the same methodology the same mindset should work everywhere like now you should be almost always be able to you know raise hands to speak um or is that just because it's me in that case uh, i will let others to to lead it but I, i'm expecting a lot of people that i don't normally see hands raised i want you to raise hands yeah michael Okay, uh, this week's uh, challenges, there is a company called Lizzy AI. So it is developing the next generation contract AI. So what it will do is it, it wants to create autonomous contract bots. It is capable of drafting, reviewing, and negotiating contract. But uh, in our task, first we have to uh, evaluate, build and uh, evaluate the RAC system. And there is uh, a document for, given for us. And, it has a question and answer. So based on what we build, we, uh, we will evaluate how it can answer the questions uh, because the answer is already there. So last time we were just uh, doing the prompting a question with with the, which data which we, which uses, but this one is very specific. So uh, I think the difference between the Last uh, last project in this one is this is specific because you we have question and answer, and also uh, we we will use lang chain for the uh, because it's advisable uh, in the document it's advisable to look to use lang chain because the main task is as, as I said earlier getting the questions and the, uh, when we ask the rack getting the correct answer is a great uh, challenge. Thank you. Okay, great. Anyone else? Abu Bakr? Uh, okay, thank you, Abu. Uh, so uh, I have, I have actually, I was actually having a little bit internet connection problem. So I joined late. Apologies for that. Maybe I missed something, but I'll go ahead with my question. So as uh, Michael uh, pointed out. Uh, would be it's, it's actually it, it it listed three different uh rack pipelines so such as lang chain lama index and others so uh from what i read and referenced uh, lama index seems to be more uh, curated for uh, rack systems and lang chain is like for general systems so I'm I'm wondering why long chain, uh, as 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 it was mentioned. So, yeah. yeah. So 
So I, I was actually maybe, planning. Maybe, maybe, maybe a specific answer for that is a lot of people might require long chain. So having, you know, both of them do similar things. Um, and it's really a matter of taste in part and strings in another. But long chain in general has so much more modules. You can do anything, you know, whether it's RAG or agents or any, and the same is Lama index. And there are many more now. Um, even, but lamb chain is let's say the most popular. And usually, you know, when you are targeting a job, you want to at least be able to speak the most popular, um, at least. So in that sense, we we just want that. But in principle, the, you know, if you are working on lama index, just refresh yourself how similar or different lamb chain is, and it's fine as well. But it, it's much more of popularity. So, um, Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Adisu? Hi, am I David? Yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, um, last time uh, we did um, the precision wrap, we just tried to uh, get some Contest from the that the that we we got, but uh, on this project, uh, from what I read, uh, we add on that one. We will uh, get some question and uh, we will question it, and uh, it will give us some answer. So uh, the difference between last project and this project would be that one. It's only uh, giving us some prompts, but now uh, it will give us I think uh, answer. It's question and answer. Yeah. Okay. So I, I will then take that opportunity. It is slightly different. You know, with that one was yes, but it was the main idea. Normally, the business objective defines it, right? So the business objective of that one was was not really Q and A, whatever. Uh, was not legal. It was actually you know. So the business objective is almost always what you have to pay attention. So the similarity of projects you should not use them as the main similarity the goal there was to be able to offer a service for anyone in any area to be able to do some um you know tests their prompts the first is generate prompts second is generate um evaluation data and third is of course rank but and we know that all of them are interrelated so you have to provide service and there are, might be so the business objective is very different. The, the approach is similar. What you do, you need probably to do some prompting and you need to, you have certain test data in this case and test document. Um, but the language of the legal language is probably much, much more harder than let's say just a normal Q and A. So it is true, the similarity, but don't be misled by the similarities. The things that you need to do and the accuracies that you need to achieve are very different here than there. And also here, the real part is to be able to really get, it's not about a general prompting, but it's just the one that works and maximizes for legal language. You will understand the data will be very different because legal language are technical language. So just, um, to give that difference, I mean, yeah. Okay, Abu Bakr. Okay, so c can we start asking question or shall yeah, we? Yeah, you, you can. You, we can do interleaving equations, class explanations. I like it that way. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> let me just continue. So what from what I have been referencing? So last week, um, I was actually taking some tutorial on RAG. So uh, I came across uh, the same thing in this documentation. So the, what what is like, what shall we do on the embedding part? For example, I read that we can use embedding uh, from pre-trained any model. So I think when the model we are trying to embed our, our documents on might be a little 
less performant than the fine-tuned version on its own data. For example, on the domain domain one, in our case, it would be the uh, the contract or the low low related questions. So, I, yep. Can you explain more on that? I mean, it is very yeah. It's like the embedding is very important, uh, right? Yes. The yeah. reason is it's very simple. So you want to distinguish between a cat and a dog and an embedding that has so much reference about dogs and has distinguished between different types of dogs and different types of cats and when you are trying to say you know what is closest it's basically high resolution versus low resolution so that means it has so much detail about the cats and the dogs then anything that when you are saying like, okay, what is the vector for this? It will, it will give you a, a very specific around that subject, a very specific vector. And it will be able to distinguish between one type and the other. So it's a lot more, the vector is, you know, a vector you give it, it's just a vector is one, like in a word sense, it's really like similar words would be around the same. Now, if you have many, many words that are similar, but slightly different, and if the vectorizer has seen those, it is better because it will create differences between two vectors. While a, you know, a vectorizer that actually didn't see that much, it happens that it, it is low resolution. That means it will not around that specific area, it doesn't have that much. So it will return more or less similar for the same concept, semantic, it will, you know, it will be very similar around the same location. So, the vector differences will not be different, right? So you really can think of it, fine tuning to be a stretching of the space. You know, if you have an, a rubber, like, you know, in a balloon, and you have written some dots, and so the first part is like a balloon that is not inflated. In that sense, yeah, it's like the vectors will be, you know, there because they are not inflated. It's very close, you know, they're they just close by. You can't distinguish them. But if you inflate it, then what happens is that the dots that you put in the balloon are highly now separated. And you can think of fine tuning to be inflating for that particular area um, and inflating around that area. Okay. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah. You can ask it so that we can go to the next one um, after finishing this. Okay. So, yeah. Uh... Yes, I, I, I saw some uh, articles on that to take I've having since this or oh, this uh, challenge is also on building high precision uh, it, and it depends on the precision of the retrieval, right? So on from the vector store. So I think uh, so maybe, but, but, maybe so let's not distinguish, let's distinguish it between the two. One is okay. a model. So the vectorizer is a model that is that has a much much important factor, and then there is a, a vector database retrieval, which is much more of like a methodology that is more because you are now putting together mixing like the chunking strategy. So that means if you put so many, this is signal noise. If it is word by word, it doesn't matter. The vectorizer doesn't matter. Uh, sorry, the the, the chunking methodology doesn't matter. If it's word by word or token by token, then that's it. Whether you use one chunk meter, another chunk meter, doesn't matter. But now when you are sentence embedders, that means when you have put together many sentences and taking an average of something, now maybe the, the actual vectorizer may be very good, but the way that you average, because you are using mean over median or this or, or the other, you now are introducing inefficiency so now when you think of a retriever and vector databases and all that that it's more about that it's about because you are now using the vectorizer to vectorize for you a sentence not a word not a token because normally that it was a token but now you are averaging something because you are averaging something there is also an issue there but that's much more a, a second problem so it's an different type of problems so there the the chunking methodology 
you know, or how you retrieve is an algorithm on its own different. The other one, the, the previous one, more on the vectorizer part is different. So these are two different problems. Okay, I will, I will ask later, yeah. let other people okay. continue. Great. Wandera, you had your hand, but if your question is answered, we can go to Heno. Wandera? Uh, I wanted to ask uh, about, um, I wanted to, what's the business objective for, the, for this project? I, I, I think it's written here, but it's good, that, you know, because that's the key component. I like the questions or most about making sure that you have very clear understanding of the business objective. Here, Lizzy AI, it's an actual company that is based, located in Israel, and it's really developing this, and it's more or less um has has been doing this for so they are preparing basically think of it as um, um an extension for microsoft word and for google doc they are developing extensions such that now when you write a, a legal thing you have access just like this code for coding they want to develop so this is the overall picture of like busy ai they want actually, they they want to develop like an extension for uh, Microsoft Word to help basically on writing or interacting with legal documents, right? So then it will it will be just be the VS Code extension, the copilot part of Google uh, Word or Doc. Um, so in that they have many different elements. So including, uh, yeah, as it's written, it's more of, it, it, it helps you write. So that means it completes, just like this code completes for you codes, it, this one completes legal predictions, like, you know, what's coming next in you, when you write. It will analyze, it will assist you in, in having Q&A if you have another legal document to check and test. And you know, this is basically what is written here. Because ultimate goal of the a fully autonomous contract bot capable of drafting, reviewing, negotiating contracts independently, end-to-end, -end, um, basically without human assistant. So which basically means they want really an, a, a full scale base code for legal, basically, or copilot, basically for legal documents in English. Your part, so that's the overall business objective of Lizzy AI. Your part is to help them do more, test more, the Q&A part, right? So they want you to come up with a uh, good algorithm, good rug system that will really have a high precision Q&A uh, component of it. So is that clear, one day? Yes, so does that mean that they already have, let me say, like, because, yeah, they say they're leveraging yeah. an hybrid LLM technology. That means they already have a model that they're working with, but they want to, they want yeah, to because, refine it. Yes, is, no, is it, it is a, a, a multi-component. So they want on-device. So, for example, offline editing means when they want offline editing, they want to oh. know. They oh, want so, to have so, on-device uh, models. So they are, they have actually another hybrid means that one. So they will be able to support offline edits such that, you know, with their very small, maybe not very accurate, but they're not, you know, kind of, but fast. And then also they want fast. Uh, if it's on-device, it will be fast. There will not be lags, right? So they have these hybrid ones that are, some are, for example, for entity recognition, they would use maybe, bar, uh, you know, um, some other, uh, let's say, um, some other models that are actually, that you can put together with the software. And, and but for rug and stuff, they're going to still use, a, like for embedding, they're probably not going to use their own on-device models, but actually um, OpenAI or Gemini. So in this case, they will use OpenAI and we provide OpenAI keys because the Q&A part, mostly it will require, unless it's about entities, you know, which entities, whatever, they will still use for RAG system, they will use OpenAI. Is that clear? So by hybrid, it meant 
both on device and local models for some you know uh, for example uh, security or um, some details they don't want to send for example um, uh, personal information to to open ai so they would probably first clean using their so using their own device they would want they would keep all data that needs to be actually not even sent to uh, lizzy ai they would do it on on device and then they have their own local models which is basically filters out every other uh, pii or personal identifying informations that they don't want to send to uh, OpenAI. And then they would use OpenAI for the actual, because it's more intelligent. So hybrid means that. Is that clear? Yes, yes, it's clear. Thank you. OK, good. Henok? OK, uh, so I have more of a general question. And it's about negotiations. So how, how yeah. does AI handle negotiations? I mean, in real life, when you negotiate, there's more to it than what someone is saying. You know, there's how they're saying it and yeah. uh, their facial expressions and other uh, external factors. So sure. how, do, how does AI handle I mean, You are thinking of it as like, so if you can reduce just that, you know, for some parts, you don't need maybe emotional aspects. For other aspects, you can provide the emotional aspect in a much more different way. So in this case, for example, one way of negotiation is a lot more, you give it a goal. So that's why you're gonna try agents. Like again, agents in this case, Q&A, we are not building their, or they're not as, in this part, it's not part of the objective. So it's much more of for your question, so it's not, and ask the agents are actually all you need is uh, can you meet Marapu? Marapu, like, can you mute? Okay. So so in this case the agents can actually normally the difference between agents and prompts are agents which you would provide a goal and a process that basically you you know how things want to, you want them to go and the agents you know without asking you until they only just ask you whenever they need only inputs but they would be able to execute until a goal achieved by doing for example exploration you know and so you can provide agents for negotiation that means you just say like okay you know i when um in a as a represent as a role they, they they take your role and basically when a user comes in and say like you know i want the cost of this and they would just let's say like okay you know the cost of this is higher and whatever whatever but we want to reduce it to this much so they know they basically you can formulate these ones in the agents and the agents on behalf of that person therefore can negotiate right so that is one part but for an actual political negotiation is a very different. So negotiation is, is not one thing. And uh, a legal negotiation normally doesn't require that much emotional aspects. So if you read about, there are multiple types of negotiation and some you cannot do without humans because it's much more of a human thing. But others are a lot more, more uh, susceptible for automation. No, I mean, it's very, it's a model. You just say it's like, I, I want this range and I wa I don't mind this. So it's basically your goal, how you define a goal. Um, I think someone asked in the text, you know, all of these things, just don't overthink them. It, they are very, it's just whatever humans can do. It's humans have a goal and they are using that goal to, you know, if you don't have a goal, usually you don't negotiate you're just basically talking right again that one can be uh, you can have a free like you know just all you give it is just basically whatever you know um maybe ask them 10 times and and settle with that so that's without a goal an explicit goal you just say like okay don't accept their first proposal but get them reduce as much as possible and then uh, accept so that's human 
think that way or they say like okay i am gonna really only pay for this amount that means they have a clear goal and how you define that goal is what what matters so in a way whatever humans can do if you think of it they think of it in language it's just that the language is not verbalized and when you verbalize it and if, if i ask you to review your thoughts then you verbalize them so it's similar so don't, don't be misled by humans doing without verbalizing doesn't mean they don't use language they actually use language inside it's just that not verbalized so there isn't that much difference and algorithms in agents and all that is very that's why it's very easy for as soon as llms came the, the first thing that came was agents because it's, it's very similar language basically every, all of us think do everything we do through language it just may not be you may not think it's verbalized or it, it, you may not think it's language but it's actually language most of it and the fascial whatever you can even incorporate it by using video chats right so and there are models that actually agents that actually takes into account exactly all these emotional aspects even things that are not humans can't read including how they type how fast they type how fast they speak their facial whatever expression in much more detail you can actually do that as well it's just a matter of implementation but for now our this is not the business objective i am much more explaining that to show you it is not that different hopefully that addresses your question uh you know yes yes it does okay and uh, then we have let's skip Dereje and then we go to Abu Bakr and Mike or Michael and Abu Bakr. Dereje. Okay, good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. So, yeah, on um, said, so you are going to just build a bot that uh, uh, can answer a question based on, based on given document. So, I said we are going to just filter PII and uh, so are we going to just uh, use hybrid as you said are we going to hybrid or, or using or only open AI and uh, the next question is so like uh, agent agent as said so maybe I heard about the when you say about autogen and uh, are we going to use that are we going to use that because uh, maybe when we interact with bot, so uh, I think it's, uh, maybe it may help us or any other increment. Yeah. So uh, again, for this particular your request, your challenge, so you have to distinguish between the two: what Lizzy AI do and what you are required to do. There are two different things. What you are required to do is the Q and A part. To, to do well on answering questions from legal documents, okay? So that's just your the ask for you. Lizzy AI do a lot of stuff. Now, you're not gonna do um, hybrid. You're gonna use only OpenAI. So, because you're not doing all stuff, you're just only gonna do the one particular part. And you're, again, you're not gonna do a, a, a hybrid because assume the documents you are given the pii whatever is extracted out so that that should be very clear and the other part i hope that's clear um Dereji? yes yes okay so that should be clear for everyone and the second part is that yes you are gonna use agents you're gonna build an agent to answer as one you know normal prompts just like what you did before you will do it so that's one strategy and the other strategy is to test if you do it through agents maybe that you could improve you know agents are a collection of they they basically generate prompts on the fly and they basically execute that and do so it's that the prompt the automatic prompting you were thinking you were doing now comes in as part of the agent because the agent would have to generate using an llm as an agent so as an, an engine so I think uh, Mahubab asked uh, ask um, about this. Yes, agents are basically, you form them, 
to use LLM as their agent, as their engine, and and to basically, so you know, in in the autogen sense, you will have a couple of agents. One agent is called just simply the user proxy, and the other one is just your basically the one executes, and then the assistant. So these are basically between these three, you will be able to do many things, including, for example, the user the user proxy just intermediates whatever needs to be uh, changed, it's an exchange, and the user asks something. So the first question would be inserted by a user, the user proxy receives this one and gives it to assistant, and assistant, for example, would then determine whether, you know, maybe to generate a question for the actual worker, let's call it the worker part. And the worker would then ask question or what should be next. And then the assistant does that. So between, this is called agents, interactions. Now, at each moment, you are generating a prompt, basically. It's just to, to generate, you know, so you could do it without agents. You could do it also by, you know, another retriever thing. For example, when a user asks, one retriever probably will send them to the LLM to, to break down this question. And then the breakdown of that question you can then use that so but that's called you have defined the rule of the game so you're not allowing for this thing to continuously be done so you have specified every every element when you convert that one into an agent it means now you pass the control to the agent such that it 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 knows to terminate or not or to stop or not okay so again if you don't understand this one it's fine but you will, it's just a, a strategy. You will implement uh, an agent. It's not maybe written now in the challenge document. We will write it as task, maybe as task three or task four, uh, that you will do the same thing with agents. So I'm not sure which, yeah, so it would be, yeah, so maybe just as task four is before this, there will be agents implementation and we will add that today. Okay, does that make sense? Is there anything that I missed from your question, Daraji? Yes, I get it. So thank okay. you. And uh, maybe on agent, so just as I read, so maybe it is just like single agent or just multi, multi agent. So can you more explain, yeah. explore about that and also maybe which one happened to you on this right now maybe it's not a good time because for some it might not make sense it's basically whether it's one agent two agents three agents it's a much more of like one part is formalism it's to simplify it's like uh, in in programming you might divide you might do everything in one code in one function but for a design purpose it's probably not good not scalable to do everything in one function so you then divide it as okay i'm gonna handle one function maybe just that handles the user and the other one that synchronizes between the two as an, an as an operator and the other one maybe as a worker so this is much more of a strategy so it's basically when you think of multi-agents it's much the same as breaking down a code or conversations into you know like organizing it in a better way and there are in agents there are things called skills and and you know what skills they have depends on again it's a prompt skill is just a, a type of prompt so you you design you know when a good prompt is found you can turn it into a skill that means it can use it again again this these things will be easier as you will work on but for now let's let's say Normally, you would use maybe a couple of agents. That's why Autogen would give you naturally a few, yeah, it's like a, a simplified form. It will get simpler, clearer as you work on it. Okay, great. Michael? Okay, so in, in task uh, two, in task two, it says like to choose a large language model. So if you are given the OpenAI key, that means are we using that or do we choose yeah. another uh, model? No, I mean, 
if you want, you can use another one to taste uh, from uh, Hugging Face, whatever, but we will provide um, opening IP so that you will, for all practical purposes, we would expect with that. But if you have, if you want to test, for example, they are fine tuned for legal in op free or open source, or, I mean, not open source, or you can run it open source in your computer. That's fine. We don't provide machines here, but um, yeah, you can test it like that on your own uh, using either open, you know, kind of free APIs or hugging face APIs that we will not provide. So we would provide only open AI. Okay, um, Abdurrahman. Uh, hello. Uh, Hi. In task, in task one, uh, there is a, a part about bias uh, reduction. So how I can measure the bias in the model response and how can I reduce it? Yep, that's a good question. That's uh, So basically, you would know when you are selecting it, you would know like when you retrieve so th there are multiple components in the rug right first is of course the chunking and of course that chunking influences the the retrieval and then not only the retrieval the model in this case because we are going to give you only one model which is the, the open ai so you probably won't test between different models but if you had multiple choices you would of course see which one but even with open ai maybe what what you could do is that you can use ADA versus small, like the text embedder small. When you use these two, you will realize, yeah, even with OpenAI, you can actually, you should use, you should use to see if ADA is better than, or if how, how good is the text embedder uh, small is better than ADA. So by just seeing different um, embedding algorithm, right? Um, so then the final bias is of course with respect to the the actual the the ground truth the ground truth in the data we gave you so i think in the data section what you have is this one right and okay you you won't see my screen but there are some data and in there there is a ground truth so you would be able to test to compute the bias on that and what you're trying to improve is that of course by changing some some part either a retrieval by changing algorithms on the retrieval or on on your technique maybe by using uh, like agents you will be able to see how much you are improved how much like for example the like did it select the right uh, the right uh, chunk to answer the question if it is biased, then you would correct that one by improving the algorithm. Is that clear, Abdul Rahman? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, it's clear. It makes sense. And yeah. this is also take me to the, my second question about uh, data. So uh, we have documents that it's look clear to me uh, how I can evaluate the model with, but also there is uh, HTML and JSON files. So what about uh, this? Uh, where uh, I'm just gonna stop share and so this is the data. So this is just our docx. So this is the contrast, and this is the Q and A that are selected from that. So you might see this one. I think we will probably correct it. It's um, I think last time it was known with the seller. It's because it's a number. I'm I'm not sure. So Nathaniel, let's correct this one. Um, but that's it. So you have Q and Q like one question, and the ground truth, and then within that. Would the seller be responsible? You will have an answer. Q2, how much the escrow amount? The escrow amount is in this one. Is the escrow amount greater than the retention amount? Uh, the answer is no, right? So within each, you can have you have certain way of Q&A 
you can test so you will use this one so my recommendation is to not to use one for testing to develop your as a validation and the other document as uh, so if you use raptor uh, as a, a validator use robinson as your test final test to check so i don't know what you mean by uh, jason uh, and uh, others. yeah there is another file uh, but i'm not sure about the path so it's contain different uh, data besides this i mean maybe it's not related but, uh, to but this yeah. yeah i mean that maybe is just something like yeah we gave you maybe for to use as a additional data sets yeah just more to test but this one is that one so maybe this is the evaluation data sets so let's see again this is the same so i think this is much more maybe for somewhere in the reference i mean i know i remember there was something uh, just some additional data that you might use i think was that provided i think Antinan was used to was able trying to find data so that he can use more but i'm not sure where it is and, yeah um, so uh, if i can interrupt here to maybe provide some info about that yeah yeah go on yeah yes so this uh, like yes you can find it in the actually the challenge folder in in uh, yeah, so you can find extra, like there is a zip file that has extra data, that's true. And the data is actually not legal contracts, they are privacy. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so it's ext extra, extra data that we was provided just to see like if you really want to do like uh, evaluate on more data because like legal contracts were not like, you cannot find a lot of legal contracts available on the internet so this is just extra but the main evaluation data is the legal contract the two uh the yeah. two these are like the, the main yeah the main thing. yeah so just abdurrahman like for your understanding then that one is for you if you need more data to you know to evaluate to check the closest we we found that maximizes and you can experiment with that because normally in machine learning don't don't use all your data for training because then you really are biasing yourself so use these ones at least a minimum if you want if you need more data for evaluation or for validation you can use this data they are not similar but they are equivalent yeah yeah okay thank you for clarification great Okay, and any other question? I mean, I, I assume everyone is being, is happy because others are asking. You could do the same. Just like, you know, I mean, I haven't heard Betelheim, for example, for a while. I don't know why you are not asking. I'm gonna call because it's 11th week and I am very much not, I haven't heard from some people quite a lot. And I'm just gonna, Jerusalem, I haven't heard from you. Grace, I used to hear, but now not anymore. Um, Mahuba, I mean, you are asking in text, great, but you're not asking, you're not really asking questions um, like in by unmuting. At least once in a, in a week, I would have expected people to prepare. Mister, you were asking, now today, I haven't heard you in both. Um, Shayla, I think you used to ask as well. Uh, Niamusi, I've never heard you, so I don't know, because I don't attend most of it, but the ones I attend, I haven't heard from you. And I think Teardros, you sometimes ask, but not often, so I want you to really improve. So in a way, know that this is just your opportunity to experiment. This is not, you know, this is much more of to try as much as you can. If not one week, the next week. If not that week, the next week. But if it's 11th week and I haven't heard you, I feel like somehow you are hiding. So uh, please just ask. If not today, ask this week, okay? Okay, um, then I don't know the orders, but Japes. Okay, my question is for the, uh, for example, the user 
So our task is the user can maybe uh, after the train, all the rug design and everything, so the user can maybe uh, upload a, a document and uh, he can have a conversation with it. Or are we constrained to this document? Are we using just these no, two? No, I think they they will they will exactly that what you mentioned. They, there's going to be lots of other documents they are interacting with. So imagine just they 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 write even their own document and then they want to ask, you know, can they ask the question to their own document um, such that, you know, they explore the document. Or they can upload a document that is given to them uh, as a contract and then they, usually contracts are lots of pages. I mean, if you, if you see them even already on this one, like rapture contracts, I don't know how many pages it is. It is maybe, we can see the page, 30, 40, I mean, 50 something. Actually, 60, yeah, 70 whatever pages of contracts. And you have to know each of them are very means something. They are very, there are numbers here and there. There are, you know, the way that it's written is different. And so, yeah, they will upload and they will be able to. And so your methodology should, of course, be able to, yeah, given a document, you should know what to do with it, decompose it in a certain format, maybe classify the document as what first. And for that, maybe you develop some form. I mean, for now, you don't have to worry, but maybe you can decompose names and stuff first. You know, there are strategies. But for now, let's imagine that all you want is to try to answer questions like what is provided here. You know, just some internal elements in the document. So you are, yeah. Is that clear? Do I answer yes. your question? Okay. Yes. Okay. Adisu? Uh, okay. On uh, task two, on the 2.1, uh, it says model uh, on 2.1, there are Okay, 2.2, 2.2, choose between, it says dense, sparse, or hybrid retrievers. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you can tell us something about yes. them. It's a good question. I, li I like questions that are more, that you're reading and asking detail, so that just it's, it's uh, it means, so whenever dense is basically vectors, so OpenAI, Gemini, or whatever, you are, you're using an actual LLM for you know, transformer models, that's called dense. The reason why it's dense is that the vectors themselves, so sparse means in, in, in mathematics, sparse means if you have like a, a dimension, for example, 10 dimensions, how many of those dimensions are actually uh, contain signal? Okay, so normally signal is contained by, you know, the dimension. So if you have a floating point in all of them, that's called dense. But if sometimes, you know, most of them are zero and only few of the dimensions have value, that's called sparse, okay? So now, in the sense of, uh, let's think of TFIDF. So this is another vectorizer. If you don't know TFIDF, it's just a way to transform text into numbers, right? So what normally TFIDF does is that, okay, there are multiple documents. Documents can be sentences, multiple sentences, or can be actual multiple documents, like that means one page, another page, another page. So you will then within the corpse, corpse is just the, the, the whole data that you have, you extract unique vocabularies, dictionaries, right? Just, and then you would have, if you have now out of those corps, let's say uh, 1000 unique words, now your vector is 1000. If you have a, you, you know, unique words of let's say within that document including words include maybe apostrophes you know what other things let's say ten thousand you have now a ten thousand uh, vector but in one document maybe all that appears is just in one document for example is only 10 of those dimensions are more because only fewer words appear here and there so maybe the the word you know um accelerating may be only used in one document only out of the 100 documents so that part will be zero for all of them and that is and most of the time in tfidf and other such uh, keyword based vectorization most of the words 
are going to be zero for each sentence, right? For each word, it's going to be more or less, uh, you know, like a one and everything is zero and then there's only one point that is one, right? So because of that, they are called sparse. So sparse and dense means that. And hybrid is basically the combination between both. Does that explain? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. Good. And um, why is the date hidden in the contract? I'm not sure what you mean by that, Abdurrahman. But if it's hidden, it's just hidden because of C. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hilary? Uh, sorry, I mean. Yeah. Sorry for interruption. Yeah, uh, no. I mean, in the, in the Raptor contract, they put uh, a dot uh, where uh, there should be a date. Yeah. So I didn't think it. I yeah, know. maybe this is just preparation. Maybe this is a prepared document. They didn't need to explain. Sometimes even the target company can be. But yeah, in this case, maybe the date was. So any question about the date should then answer the date is unknown. So okay, the, thank you. The, the algorithm should be able to know that there is no date and therefore I don't know instead of trying to make up the date, yeah. Great, Hilary? Okay, so uh, from from ta uh, task five first, my question is, uh, we asked to implement at least one enhancement. So um, just to be sure, uh, do they mean, do you mean task four? uh the yes. the ideas optimization ideas on task one. i mean so here is yes some things right like that okay. are provided and then you can either implement one from this or one or two or uh, two one from this or you might increase other enhancements based on your exploration that you think should be a higher priority it's much more of like because when you explore you'll understand which actually are much more affecting so you you prioritize them mm -hmm. and you implement two either by priority or by things that you already it's easy for you things like that but you can also in principle you can add more there's no your exploration okay. but yes okay so um uh, so being uh, clear on that uh, we have uh, the task uh, the one for deep understanding of legal text so uh on this note, I did some research, uh, but I maybe I'll do the I'll try to go over the, the others um, yeah. to see the easier or something. But on that note, I found that you can use legal graphs to to increase to like find to find the model GPT GPT model. So uh, it was there's a there's a I don't know a research on Axiv that we are uh, to sc uh, the script web code cases judgments laws and things like that and then so is that approach uh, plausible yeah, I mean uh, I, I think so I mean for me I don't want to limit I mean in a way like the thing is we are preparing you for you to defend yourself as you present Lizzie and I hopefully will be willing to listen and to hire from our courts. Last time they tried, they didn't find um, suitable, but they might find from here if, a, if a interest also is there. So in a way, yeah, you should be critical. Now it's 11th week, you're almost ready, you know, to really provide value. So if you were dumb, you know, you want to maximize, right? And you want to get something novel. So yeah, it's like try, even the agent, for example, is just a new, you can think of it as part of this addition. Like, you know, using agents maybe is just one optimization. So, so this is like the fifth one from here is probably think of it as agent. And, and any other thing that you think, it's all about showing that it is generalizable and it is better. That means it's not just only particular, because particular means, you know, the very particular that doesn't apply, I can tell you, to not use any LLM, but for you to sacrifice yourself to go through the document and answer them. That's called an absolute no generalizable because for now another data, if you are not there, 
it will not be answered, right? I'm, I'm, I'm giving a very extreme example. And a very, like, an extreme example also that really works is that it is so good, it doesn't matter. It even knows whether it's a legal or not. It knows what kind of legal it is. And from that, it would be, like, super intelligent to, just like a human, search it using, you know, uh, another agent approach to search everything just like a human and then really answer and it has a probability understanding that okay two sections maybe are reading similar but now i'm going to distinguish between those sections and i'm going to approach it from a different so just like a human you are basically have a robot implemented and that robot really mirrors humans intelligence using llms and basically answers all the time when it's confusing even it says like it's confusing when it's not available it says it's not available when it's so that's extreme so it's in between of course we're trying to be in between so what you think will help more be generalizable and answer you know becomes useful for any type of document is better Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Michael. Yeah. Okay. Another question regarding Hilaris in the other document. Uh, there is a uh, in the slide. Please AI. Uh, there is uh, what we expect on this challenge. There is a good better in great part. Maybe you can explain yeah. about that. Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's the same. It's. I mean, this is their version of what they consider good and that i mean they probably will give you know this is they don't know you so you know it's you might be doing just basically they don't know that you have done all of this so they want the basic workflow evaluation in place suggesting solid enhancements that's good that basically means just following this and presenting what you have done and understand what you have done Right? It's just basically, you're not just doing something, you're not just using a framework long chain and run something, but also understand why you did it. You know, so that's a evaluation. You do you do have a, an okay understanding of the statistical test. That means you are, you know, evaluation versus validation versus test, you know. So you can present, for example, yeah, in my validation, I got this. In my test, I got this, you know. So something like that. You can defend yourself basic. And also, after you do everything, you also go through and reflect that what could have, what could really change or make it better. That's good. And better is, of course, you not only have a basic rag system. So the basic flow means basic rag, just you know, without really too much experimenting. But the better means if you could implement a bit more strategies, like you know. You, you have tested not only one just method, but multiple methods. And you have identified the, the high performer. And great means, of course, you surprise them. And they really exactly, it's not just everyone these days can run, even a high school with just a small support can run RAG if they know just how to program simply. But that's not the point. It's for you to really use your understanding, you know, your code understanding, your and you know your your intelligence basically to understand what is going on so you can explain it you know and it's not just you are just like oh yeah like the package gave me you know oh ragas did it i mean that's that means you don't understand so if you can defend if, if you don't understand how ragas does you you did go and search for ragas or ask it in tutorials or something like that and then of course your code is good organized and basically that the product, whatever at the end you have, it is, it has good features. So that's what they're looking for. Because they, as I said, they wanted to hire. And I don't know how many they hire, maybe they don't, but that's their interest when they provided this. Hopefully that's clear. Okay, wonderful. So what are the top three things that are fake positive and generalizability of the drug? I mean, it's of course, uh, it, it is much more about the chunking strategy. And because, for example, one chunking strategy might be useful for one type of contract type. For example, a worker contract type versus, I don't know, uh, an 
you know, some selling, whatever thing. So generalizable means is like, okay, you know, that your retrieval, for example, is deep, is in some way um, specific to what type of part, you know, if it is deep, if it is sensitive that you have, you have implemented that. That means your chunking strategy to be different. I am, if I, if I know, then I could tell you, but there are many and it's only within, when you explore, you will know what are the top three. If you could answer even that, that would be great. Maybe that's harder to answer even after exploration because there are many and you only tasted a few. So by top three, you can always say only within the perspective of the things you explored. So it's harder to, to say what are top three in this sense. Yeah. I mean, many things, Abu Bakr, just the uh, chunking strategies. You can have word by word chunking, sentence by sentence chunking, document by document, you know, and what works is an optimization problem. So this is an optimization. If it's very small, then you really uh, would lose context. If it's very large, you would have a noise. So now it's in between. And there are multiple algorithms for chunking. So you have to explore them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be one of the tutorials in the Q&A there will be. Uh, Adizu? On the, the task four, it says uh, improving the capability of interpret uh, the context. So are, uh, are we saying context, is it about legal or uh, just yeah. in general about legal or uh, about... Uh, no, I think it's just context uh, of... So where is it? Just in task four. Just for a deep understanding yeah. of legal texts. The legal texts. The second point, yeah. yeah. Enhance the system ability to process and assign language, which often include complex and specific terminology. Yeah. Improve the, the system's part. capability yes. to interpret the context in legal documents. Exactly. So basically, it means it's a, a particular to that, to a document, there is a context, mm -hmm. right? So that context could be, um, yeah, as I said, much more of a personal contract or um, this that type of contract and they, it has context in it so if you leverage the context of the contract it's better so it's the context of the document no. okay. Thank you. Yeah. wonderful i like the questions today a lot of you were active and asking and i am really asking the others that i have directly mentioned also your name i know some of you were active at some point some of you were trying to be active and you're probably active already. It's just that I have only had a few times the ones I, I caught. And really it's week 11. I mean, it's not, you have spent all this time coming here, doing stuff. I mean, why don't just finish it, complete it? Like, you know, become the person who just gets a, a job. And if you don't ask, you know, you may be, I, mean, I know that even if those, you, those of you who don't speak now, you may be actually are a good speaker. But a good so, uh, someone who really knows how to ask a question is very different. And I, I am, you know, it, it does, it may not represent entirely your skill, but just having that tendency mindset just to be able to ask and support others is very important. It's because of the people who ask questions that we are benefiting. If they don't ask, you will not. And then why don't become a contributor as well when you can? If not one day, just prepare for another day. So I think really just think about it. It's like, think of it easy. It's like, don't, don't overthink it. It's most of the time it's overthinking it. So don't overthink, just ask. If you don't ask, say just hi. You know, it's like, get used to be become a, a participant and a contributor. And for a while, if you don't have even a good question, just say like, you know, I don't have a good question, but just explain to me this. Or, or I, I just, I just want to say hi, you know? It's just, it's important, the mindset and the desire and the things just, it's the tendency that's more important than even the questions themselves, okay? Thank you, Betale, for responding quickly. Um, so that's really, you know, it has, here we, we're not really, we're not at all in a game of like evaluation, ev because we're not the evaluator, we are the, the setters, the, you know, like we are trying to say something such that the evaluators would find it useful. And we know what the evaluators want. The evaluators are job employers. We want, they, you know, sometimes, I mean, I, I will say it, even if it doesn't 
it is not politically correct. If for most people, when I think this is just much more from a smaller data, so it's it can be highly biased. But if you put a Kenyan female and anyone else that we have trained, a Kenyan female will be selected for a job. And I, I was wondering why, because they communicate very well, you know, they're confident. And it's not true for a Kenyan male most of the time. It's, I, I must admit. And the, the thing is that most employers, even if we put a person that is like so good in their technical part, and then a person, you know, that is well communicating, understanding socially, probably a little bit more in kind of perceiving, what they see the employers is that they will say, okay, even if that person doesn't do the job, I will find purpose for them to do something else. So, you know, like they optimize right there. They optimize based on the skills, the questions they have and things. They would optimize, okay, if not, even if the work is not delivered, you know, I will find purpose for that person. But if you are just only being evaluated for the technical, they, they will be very, very cruel, right? Because you have only one spot and they must make sure you are actually suitable for that. And most of the time they will doubt because you know, to evaluate for one thing is a very hard process. So even a highly technical person, they will fail because, and so these questions people are asking, you know, you have seen them, they have improved the questions and the approach, their tone, it's not anymore vibrating, they're not anymore you know, nervous. So that part would help them because then they will say like, okay, if not for this, I will find purpose for that. So it may not convince you, I'm not telling it for convincing, but you should understand our role here. It is to set, to prepare, such that when you are in an interview, when during the evaluation, you are super cool, super got used to talking, and you know you can ask questions. You know that you have to ask questions, and most people they might not know. You have to ask questions. It's not even an option. It's just like if you are in an interview and you don't ask questions, people say like you haven't thought about them. You know, it's like. It's like they talk to you and you're not talking to them. That means, you know, normally in a social context, you will know what that means. If you talk to a person and they don't talk to you, they don't talk to you, it means they don't want you. So all of this, we can increase it just by having the small effort here. So it's only within that that we are demanding and not just anything else. Hopefully we'll get better over the next one, two weeks. So with that, I will leave you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, yeah, just do the, your best on this project. Thanks, Data Academy team.